A lot of people will ask us, can you teach us tricks to beat the algorithm? These platforms have got no tolerance policy for people that try to get around them and eventually they figure it out anyway. Hello there and welcome back into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. I'm your host, Sam Hind. And today in this episode, I want to keep this one short and sweet, but I want to talk to you about some of the latest social media algorithm updates, changes and shifts that are going to help you to perform better on Facebook, Instagram, really any platform that you're using. The thing that we've got to be constantly aware of is the fact that we always need to be evolving and adapting to these platforms and their changes. And that in itself can be really scary and overwhelming. So how do you keep up to date with everything that's going on? Simple solution here is make sure that you're tuning in to people who are doing the hard work for you. There is no point reinventing the wheel and I definitely don't want to see you consistently doing things on social media just because they used to work, waiting until somebody feeds you the information that there is a new way. So this episode is all about helping you stay up to date with the latest tips, techniques, changes in the algorithms and what you need to know right now. I'm going to share with you four key points that are going to help you right now. A few of these will be aha moments and I'll give you a few little solutions to go with them. So let's dive on in. Okay. So as we talk about updates, I want to remind you, what is the algorithm? How does it work? So to put this into very, very simple terms for you, every social media platform has its own algorithm. An algorithm is simply a program that runs in the background of the platform and it's designed to deliver the right content to the right people, essentially to keep them on the platform. So if we're looking at Facebook and Instagram, which are both owned by Meta, they're main aim is to keep people on the platforms for longer and more frequently. And they do this by knowing everything there is to know about each and every one of us. They know what we do for a living, what we're interested in, what we're not interested in. They know who we have conversations with and what those conversations look like. They even know what our family life and household income look like. They take all of this information and use it to deliver us content that we simply cannot ignore. Ever notice how when you go to your Facebook feed, you intend to be there for a couple of minutes and an hour later, you pull yourself out of the rabbit hole or you say to yourself, I'm going to watch just one reel. And then before you know it, 30 reels and an hour and a half down the track, you pull yourself back out again and think, where did the time go? This is not by accident. This is the work of the algorithm, knowing you so well that it knows what to deliver you and when. So the trick here is to know how do we work with the algorithm? And this is something that Greg and I talk to people a lot about, particularly when we keynote speak at conferences, we find that a lot of people will ask us, can you teach us tricks to beat the algorithm? And the first thing that we will say to anybody is that we can't in all good conscience teach you to beat a program that is not only more sophisticated than almost any piece of technology in existence, but more to the point, these programs know more about us than we in some cases know about ourselves. The trick is not to beat them, but it's actually to learn to work with them. These platforms have got no tolerance policy for people that try to get around them and eventually they figure it out anyway. We've seen this time and time again where people do activities on social media that for a while get them some quick wins, but eventually either completely stop working or come back to bite them. And when I say come back to bite them, it ends in things like uh, something you might have called sh- uh, heard called shadow banning. It can be flagging. It can even be page shutdowns. The platforms have got a no tolerance policy for people that breach their terms of service and rules of use. And so the best thing that we can possibly do is get to know what the platforms want and then work with those things so that they're actually then doing the hard lifting for us. I'm going to just explain something here. I hope really, really sticks with you. I really want you to know that when you work with that algorithm, it will help you 
Why? Because it already knows everything about your target audience. It already knows what they're interested in. The trick is simply learning how to give it what it wants to keep people on its platform so that you get what you want, which is more reach, more connection, more leads, and of course, more conversions to grow your amazing business. So a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to in this episode today. The first of these is actually around links. Um, this is been, this was, we've always known that this has been a bit of a challenge, but you know what? It was a real eye opener for Greg and I. We, uh, we headed over to San Diego earlier this year to do, uh, get some updated learnings from the best of the best in the industry. We heard from the best of the best on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, email marketing, adverts, Google AdWords, everything. We heard from the best of the best from all over the globe that have been flown into this event. And one of the things for me that was a big aha moment was something that we already knew wasn't performing well has actually taken an even bigger shift and dive. And that was links on social media. So I want to talk to you just really quickly about links on Facebook specifically, because unlike Instagram, Facebook allows you, should you choose to do so, to put a link into any Facebook post. The thing is that we already knew that putting a link in a post on a business page would reduce your potential reach. But the shift is that in the last 12 months, Meta have just announced that link reach uh, globally has dropped by almost 90% across all of its uh, spaces. So from personal profiles to business pages to groups. So interestingly enough, and this for me was the big, you've like, you know, wow moment was not so much business pages, but groups. So whilst we knew that links that took people off the platform were not perform- performing well on business pages, I know that many people, particularly in the direct selling industry, were using groups as a place to put their links instead. So the attitude was, okay, I know that if I put a link to my online store on my business page, my reach will probably be reduced. So I'm going to take it across to my group instead and share it with my VIPs. Uh -uh, That's where we're seeing a big shift here. Link reach within a Facebook group has been announced to have been reduced to over 90% um, in a decreased reach, which actually equates to an average of 0.4% of any group followers will actually be delivered a post with a link in it. Now, when I say link, I'm actually referring not to links within the platform itself. I'm referring to links that take people away from the platform. So this includes YouTube links, links to any other social media platform, links to your online store, links to your website. Any of these uh, are going to land you in that space where you're going to be reaching significantly less people. So this begs the question then, if I am trying to sell things online and it's really important for me to be able to share my links, how do I do it? Well, that's a brilliant question. I'm very glad that you asked because I've got a couple of quick solutions here to help you with this. There are actually some great spaces to use links effectively that won't impact you in this way. The first is this, know that whenever possible, please connect with people privately. If you were to send a link in a private message to someone who's requested it, you are much more likely to get that link to them and get them to take an action than simply posting and praying as we call it, which is where you plonk something in a post and kind of hope it gets your result. So sending something privately because it is customized to that person, that person has asked for it because you put a really great post out there that creates curiosity and intrigue is always going to be the ideal. The next tip I've got for you is if the link you are trying to post is indeed a video, so let's say that you're um, taking people to YouTube, uh, the best thing that you can do is if that video belongs to you, always try and upload it organically, which means directly to the platform. So if we're using Facebook, for example, our podcast typically will be uploaded directly to Facebook and then separately to YouTube. So okay, we're not going to necessarily be using Facebook to increase our YouTube followers, but we're likely to get more people seeing that episode on Facebook than we would if we had simply posted a link to YouTube. So you've got to kind of weigh up the differences there. That's another option. 
The last two suggestions that I have for you are to use the spaces you're given on Facebook effectively. So we're actually given the option to have a call to action button just uh, to the bottom right of your cover image. This is the one key action you want people to take when they go to your page. So a little hot tip here is make sure that whatever link you're drawing people to, whether it be your online store, your YouTube channel, your website, a video, whatever that might happen to be, if you want to take people off the platform and you want to get people's attention to that link, a really great thing to do is use your call to action button. So it might be a find out more, watch the video, go to the website, um, shop now. These are all options you have within Facebook for that call to action button. You can tie your link in there, whatever it happens to be. And then if you're doing any posting, refer people to the call to action button and tell them to head there rather than posting the link in the post. That's another way to get around it. If you want to level that up, you can use the cover image itself to draw people's attention to that call to action button. But last but not least, you've also got an info section uh, and that is uh, where people find out a little bit more about your business. So you'll have your little bio or your little about in there. You have your website, your email address, your contact information, and Facebook now also gives you the ability to put the links into all your other social media platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, you can put them all in. So this means you can have a place people can go to to find this information that doesn't require you to be putting it in the posts that you're putting on Facebook itself. So this is going to get you around that link problem. Just a couple of little tips there. The next one I want to talk to you about is actually uh, unconnected distribution. Now, we're going to explain this because the thing that most of you will be used to is what we call connected distribution. And Meta announced, this was both Facebook and Instagram, late last year that they were going to be pushing more people towards or delivering more content based on unconnected distribution um, than connected. And I'm going to explain this to you now so it makes sense. Connected distribution is where people receive content based on the people that they're friends with, the pages that they follow, and the groups that they're members of. That is connected distribution. And in the past, we've all been used to the more followers I get on my business page, the more reach I get. The more people in my group, the more reach I get on those posts. In other words, I get more followers. I know that vast majority of them will be delivered, some of, if not all of my content, if I do a good job. That is no longer a guarantee. And what Facebook and Instagram are saying now is that they're actually opening up the doors to reaching people outside of your existing connections, which is what we call unconnected distribution. So essentially what they're saying is they're now going to be choosing content and delivering content based on four key questions. The first of those questions is this, what content is currently available? Basically, if you aren't showing up, you're not currently going to be considered. So this is why consistency and showing up regularly on social media is really important right now. So number one, what content is out there? The next thing is that they assess that content. This is the algorithm at work here. They assess that content and they ask the question, who is out there and what do we know about them? So what do we know about the users on Facebook? Third question is, who would be interested in being delivered this content and who will engage with it? Now, this is an important point because it makes it very clear that both platforms are looking for interaction. They're not looking for passive use. They actually want more people interacting with content. So asking the question, who will interact with and engage with this content? So question number three, and then question number four is simply this, who do we deliver this content to that's going to be interested in it? So they're marrying all of that information together and they're saying, you'll notice, nowhere in those four questions do they ask who is connected with this person, who follows this page, who's a member of their group. It's not coming into the equation anymore. So Mark Zuckerberg made the announcement earlier this year that, In the early stages of this year, up to 15% of the content that you receive on Facebook now will be from people you've never met before, pages you've never followed, and groups you've never seen. 
And he said that up towards the end of 2023, this will have increased to up to or over 30% of all content delivered. So essentially, up to 30% of all content delivered to any news feed on Facebook now is going to be content from pages, groups, and people you do not follow. This is both a great thing and a great opportunity and a terrible thing. Why? Well, number one, if you are not good at your content, if you have not worked out what conversations to have and how to get the attention of your customers or your followers, then you're likely to reach even less people than you were before. The flip side is the really great opportunity, and that's this. We've never before had such an amazing opportunity to reach even more people that we didn't know, even more potential leads. Facebook is saying that without you paying for ads, we're going to show your content to more people if you get good at the content. So to be really clear on this, content doesn't need to be perfect. It's not about who's the best at taking the photos or, you know, who's the better influencer or who looks better on camera. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about who's creating the most interesting, engaging content that people want to interact with, most importantly, that people actually want to consume. So the question I ask you is this, have you got clear about who it is that you're here to reach, what they care about, what they're interested in, and what sort of conversations you can be having on social media so that we can get that algorithm to deliver more of your content to more of your people? So unconnected distribution is now a thing and it is a very real thing that we all need to be mindful of because it is impacting all of the content that we put out there. Okay, that's number two, unconnected distribution. And number three is this. I want you to be very careful about something that we call clickbaiting. Clickbaiting is when we get people to, we tell people that we're going to do one thing and we do another, or essentially it's when we bait people into uh, being a part of a piece of content that they never agreed to be a part of. So there's a few little elements to this here. Basically, what Facebook is being very careful of is it doesn't want uh, people's privacy to be breached for a start, and it doesn't want people to be spammed by content that they were not interested in seeing. Now, we all have some tools that are available for us to use, but we have to be very careful not to abuse those tools, and tagging is one of those. So, for example, if there is a photograph that you put up or uh, there is an event that you're running Tagging all of your friends in that post just because you want them to pay attention to it is not okay and it may very well get you into strife. What Facebook wants you to do instead is only tag people who are relevant to that post. So they've either got something to do with it, they were at whatever it was that you're talking about or they want to be at or they're in the image that you took, that you've put up. So uh, an example of this, we've seen this a lot, particularly with things like fundraisers, even online stores, where they put a post up and then they tag all of their friends into the post on a business page or on a personal profile. Not cool. It will it'll annoy the person that got tagged, but it's also going to flag Facebook to pay close attention to what you're doing. So be very careful doing that. The other thing is, and clickbaiting when you tell people that they're going to take them one place and they end up going somewhere else. So when you um, tell them to take a particular action and it's not truthful. So we see this where people might put up, let's say you've got a blog that you want people to read and the blog is about um, beach living, but you get people's attention uh, by putting a title on that blog post saying, oh my gosh, you will never believe what just happened to me. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the blog post that you wrote because the blog post itself is about beach living and the new beach house that you've got, whatever. My point is be very careful if you're going to bait people into clicking something that you're honest about what they're clicking on so that they don't end up going somewhere and going, this had absolutely nothing to do with what I clicked on. And we all know what I'm talking about because we've all done it. And it can be very frustrating. So be very mindful if someone clicks on something that you've put up that you are being honest about what they're going to click on. It doesn't mean you can't get smart 
about your headings, your titles, um, but it does mean that you've got to be a bit honest about it. So don't go putting false information up to get people's attention, to watch a video or pay attention. We've seen this with a lot of news sites where they have this false news headline that when you click on it had nothing to do with the headline that you thought you clicked on. That is clickbaiting and this is getting really clamped down on. So be very, very careful of that. The last thing I want to talk to you about is AI. Ooh, well, hasn't that been the thing of recent times? You may have heard chat GPT being thrown around. You may be someone who is a lover of chat GPT and all the amazing things that it can do. You may have already stumbled across the amazing world of social media content that can be created and derived in seconds from this amazing tool. But I want to warn you about something. The algorithm on any platform is now designed to also recognize artificial intelligence, which is what chat GPT is. So what do we have to know about this? It's very simple. We have to know that artificial intelligence, when simply copied and pasted, is actually recognized by the platform and it's going to reduce your potential reach. Now, I actually, uh, an extension of this was uh, my kids were chatting to me about this the other day and they said that one of the things that has come up in schools now is that every uh, assignment, um, article, essay, anything that they do, that they create, every project that they submit, They first have to run now through a program, a piece of simple software that reads very, very quickly in seconds the the project that they uploaded and it will give a report to the school telling them whether this was artificial intelligence written or human written. Now, if this can be done on a website for kids at school, I can tell you right now, these algorithms on the platforms can also pick up on this stuff very quickly and very easily. Now, another little heads up is that anything that you think, little trick, anything you think might have been written by ChatGPT, you can actually copy and paste into ChatGPT and say, did you write this? And it will tell you. Why? Because it recognizes everything it created. So the algorithms now have the ability to tell if any post or any piece of content was written by any form of artificial intelligence. So Does that mean that you can't use chat GPT to create social media content? Heck no, you absolutely can. It is a very powerful tool, but comes with a very big but. You've got to make sure you make it your own. Use it as a framework, not as the end Uh, the end result. So use it to save you a ton of time. This is really, really important and very, very powerful, but still put your personality into it. So if you're going to use ChatGPT to come up with social content, use it to, rather than take you 15 minutes to write the caption, take three, get it to create the framework, edit it yourself. So it's using your words that it's, it's yours. It's got your personality inserted and then use it, but don't straight copy and paste from any artificial intelligence because it will be recognized by the platforms. Whether you're using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, any of the above, doesn't matter. They all are programmed now to recognize this. So ChatGPT, brilliant tool, but it's a tool. It's not everything. You still need to insert your personality and make your content your own. But that's it from me today. They are four really quick, simple updates uh, and things that you need to be mindful of uh, and some best practices in there as well. But have a really amazing week. Thank you again for tuning into our podcast. And we look forward to seeing you on the podcast again next week. That's it from me. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. If you love listening and you found that this was helpful for your direct selling business, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the recommended video that's popped up on your screen right here. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.